Welcome to SLO 22. The goals of this video are to be able to write a polar equation of a given polar graph. So there are many types of polar graphs. We have circles, limassons, there are four different types of limassons, interloop limassons, cardioids, dimpled limassons, and convex limassons. There are lemnus gates, and there are rose curves. So all of these can be written in either way using sine or cosine. So the only difference between a sine and cosine is its placement on a graph on the polar plane. I'll just be reading the first one here for each one, but just know that you can replace it for sine or cosine. So for a circle, the general form is r equals a sine theta or r equals a cosine theta. For limassons, the general form is r equals a plus or minus b sine theta. It just depends on the limasson. Again, you can replace cosine with it. So since there are four types of limassons, the values of a and b determine what exactly it's going to look like. So if a divided by b is less than one, you'll have an inner loop. If a divided by b is one, you'll have a cardioid. If a divided by b is greater than one but less than two, you'll have a dimpled limasson. And if a over b is greater than or equal to two, you'll have a convex limasson. For lemnus gates, r squared is equal to a squared sine 2 theta, or you will can replace it with cosine. And for rose curves, you'll have r equals a sine n theta, or r equals a cosine n theta. But let's get on to what it, it looks like. So all of the graphs that will be shown next are from Desmos. It's just easier to use those to showcase what the graphs look like. But in this case, we have a circle graph and we have r equals three cosine theta. Three is our a, and a is equal to the diameter of the circle, as we can see here. And cosine is along the x-axis. If we were to put a negative in front of a, the graph would be going this way instead, because a negative flips it. But let's look at if it's sine. So here we have a negative sine circle. We have r equals negative 1.5 sine theta. As you can see here, the diameter is 1.5. Normally, a sine circle graph would be here. It'd be in this general area. But since it has a negative, it actually goes downward. Sine is along the y-axis. It's symmetrical to the y-axis. So we're going to try and find the equation of this graph. Let's notice a few things. This is symmetrical to the x-axis. It goes along the x-axis. This means we use cosine in this time. It's also not pointing to the right, meaning that it's pointing to the left and that it has a negative in front of the a value. The diameter is 2.5. So putting all of this knowledge together, we know that the equation is r equals 2.5 cosine theta. Let's look at another example. We're going to try and find the equation of this circle. So this is along the y-axis. It's symmetrical to the y-axis. The diameter is 3, meaning a is 3, and it points upward, meaning there is no negative in front of the a. So putting this all together, we can have r equals 3 sine theta. We're now going to get into limassons. There are multiple types, as I said earlier, but we're going to start with an inner loop limasson. In this graph, we have r equals 4 plus 5 cosine theta. So a, which is 4, and b is 5. When you do 4 over 5, that's less than 1, which creates this inner loop here. So in this case, since we have a cosine inner loop limasson, a denotes the y-intercepts. So a is 4, and as we can see, 
our y-intercept is here and our y-intercept is here. The length from the origin here where this inner loop happens to the end is the value of a plus b, so that's 9. And as we can see from here to here, that's 9. Uh, it's cosine, so it's symmetrical to the x-axis. Let's look at this inner loop Lemison. We have r equals 2 minus 3 sine theta. So 2 over 3 is still less than 1, which creates this inner loop. A denotes the x-intercepts in this case because it uses sine. And with sine, it's symmetrical to the y-axis. So the length from the origin to the end is the value of a plus b again. 2 plus 3 is 5. From here to here, it's 5. So since there's a negative in front of this b, it actually flips it downward. Most of the time, the loop would be here and would go upward. But that's what the negative does. Let's move on to cardioids. Let's move on to cardioids. Cardioids are also a type of lemison. In this case, a over b is equal to 1. That creates this dip here. And since we're using sine, it's symmetrical to the y-axis. And a represents the y-intercepts for cosine. The height is double the value of a. So a is 2, and the height is 4. We have the x-intercepts here of 2, which also go along with a. So this is a dimpled Lemison. Uh, this one is r equals 4 plus 3 sine theta. And this is dimpled because a over b has to be greater than 1 but less than 2, which is the case here. a denotes the x-intercepts because it uses sine. However, if this used cosine, a would denote the y-intercepts. The length from the dimple right here to the x-axis is equal to a minus b. And the length from the x-axis to the top is equal to a plus b. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and 4 plus 3 is 7. That's how this works. Let's move on to convex lemisons. Let's look at a convex lemison. So this one is r equals 4 plus 2 cosine theta. The convex lemison is created because 4 over 2 is, great, is greater than or equal to 2. In this case, it's equal to 2. And a over b just has to be greater than or equal to 2 to create a convex lemison. So in this case, we're using cosine. That's why a denotes the y-intercepts. However, if we were using sine, it would denote the x-intercepts. The length from this flattened portion to the y-axis is equal to a minus b. And the length from the y-axis to the end is equal to a plus b. So you know, 4 minus 2 is 2, which creates this portion, and 4 plus 2 is 6, which creates this portion here. So we're asked to find the equation of this graph and the type of lemison it is. Uh, so this is along the x-axis. It's reflective along the x-axis, meaning it uses cosine. The length from the origin to the end is 10, and the y-intercepts are at 4. So these intercepts whether it's x or y, have always represented a, and we know the length is 10, so we can do 10 minus 4 to get the value of b, which is 6. The graph is pointing to the left uh, instead of to the right, which is usually what happens with cosine inner loop lemisons, so we know there's a negative in front of b. So this is an inner loop lemison because of the inner loop, and we have the equation of r equals 4 minus 6 cosine theta. I'm going to stop the video right here. This is the end of part 1 for SLO 22. This covered everything down to lemisons. In the next video, we're going to start covering lemniscates and rose curves. So come back for part 2.